Hello. Um, this video is a, about a topic of sorts that has been on my mind for some time. Um, basically, um, it's about you know Gary Kurtz and uh, <clears throat> George Lucas. I'm sure by the title you already know, but basically, um, what has started this is um, heard stuff about you know Gary Kurtz um, talking about Return of the Jedi and the prequels, and not really being fond of them, and then hearing what he says about this and that, what was supposed to happen with Star Wars, and, um, yeah, it, it's fairly interesting stuff that he's said, I'm sure a lot of you know about what I'm referring to, um, saying how, basically, after he left as a producer, Things shifted, and all Lucas cared about really was mer merchandising, and it wasn't as interested in the story anymore. Well, back in 2006, I wrote a paper about George Lucas. You know, I was in sixth grade, and uh, it was the second semester, and we were given an assignment to it's to help like you with comprehensive writing and be able to write uh, uh, better so we what we were to do is uh, find somebody who you admire I like George Lucas because you know I like Star Wars and um, well you know, I researched George Lucas's upbringing, his early films, his, you know, all the way up to the current movies, which at that point was uh, *Revenge of the Sith*. And um, when doing that, you know, you. I uh, came across some stuff about what, like, you know, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, Samuel L. Jackson, Ewan McGregor, all these people, you know, uh, John Williams, people that, you know, worked with him and would talk about him, you know, and the friendships, relationships George Lucas and all of those had with him. And when I got to Gary Kurtz, because, you know, he was the producer for American Graffiti, Star Wars, and The Empire Strikes Back, you know, there were things they were talking about with him, like with uh, Gary Kurtz and George Lucas, but then, as I, you know, because, you know, I found all that stuff with the, uh, George Lucas and the actors and actresses and composers and people involved with all this stuff. Fascinating. With Gary Kurtz, I found eventually, you know, you didn't really have a whole lot of anything there for a while. Uh, because, like, after Empire, really wasn't a whole lot things said about that. And then I come across some stuff where Gary Kurtz says George Lucas just wasn't that interested in making movies based off of their story and was just in it for really the um, merchandise action figures and stuff like that. And um, I began with Return of the Jedi because of the Ewoks. And um, I was just like, wow. So, i curious, I kind of looked at Gary Kurtz as well. I looked at all the other people as well. 
Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford. Uh, even though it was about George Lucas, you know, he clearly was uh, a big part of their lives, just as much as they were a part, big part of his. So I kind of wanted to see some of these other people, uh, just so I could, you know, just do a little better, maybe a thorough more research for my paper. And, you know, I wrote a lot of stuff down, and there were little tidbits about each actress and actor, you know, composers, just because, you know, they were instrumental in his uh, career as much as he was in theirs, so, you know, again, I just, basically I just want to be thorough, so I looked at Gary Kurtz, and while well, he's saying all this stuff, which may be curious and kind of scratch my head, about George Lucas was only in it for merchandise, and that essentially began with Return of the Jedi, and then with the prequels as well. Um, now, when looking more into Gary Kurtz, because basically all that stuff really was maybe more interested in, like, why is he saying all this? No. And then, in his filmography, looking at some of the later stuff Gary Kurtz did, I found some stuff that was very Um, basically, it was very, I guess, eye-opening. And then when I would go and look more into the behind-the-scenes of Star Wars, and, like, with budget, you know, the budget uh, of the films going over budget, you know, for Star Wars, Empire... Then some other films he had a hand in. And then noticing how Return of the Jedi stayed within the budget, didn't go over. It got me very curious. And granted, I didn't write a whole lot of that really into my uh, paper, because it had to be like about like five, ten pages long. So because of the uh, research I did, was like 10 pages long. Um, but I had a notebook and I wrote a whole lot of stuff down, including uh, like the websites, because that was something you needed. Um, but before I got into, basically before I get into this video, I wanted to say, I don't have sources, unfortunately. Um, I wrote a blog about this, really. But really it's just a little thing I wrote, kind of like a little article of sorts, just one thing, and uh, <clears throat> again, because I don't have sources, I know people will take what I say with a grain of salt, and if I did have sources, y you probably would anyway, because with the amount of research I did on this, uh, like a decade ago, um, then hearing all this stuff about with Gary Kurtz and George Lucas is falling out. I mean, it's very interesting and to a degree just maybe a little strange in that it seemed like they had a fine working relationship then all of a sudden yeah, yeah, not so much, and that's what I want to basically talk about. Um, so basically, um, um, you know, Gary Kurtz wasn't very fond of how things were going to go with Return of the Jedi. Um, and in my blog, I kind of hint maybe because he was a little, <clears throat> maybe Gary Kurtz was a bit jealous that 
George Lucas was a good businessman because in the film business, you kind of have to be a good businessman in terms of negotiating this and that, that way, particularly in those days, uh, to have creative control. Um, uh, and basically one thing is that um, before Star Wars really, uh, Gary Kurtz nearly never produced a big budget movie. Um, the biggest budget probably at that point for him was American Graffiti, but you know, uh, Star Wars was like 11 million dollars, which was huge back in the 70s. And um, um, he does, he's not basically there's somewhat of a pattern with Gary Kurtz in big, some big budget movies where he, he's not very good at handling big budget films. Um, he tries to, in a way, take over the movies he's producing to make them the way he wants them to be. And I'm looking at my uh, little blog, oracle, whatever you want to call it, here. So if I'm not looking at you, that's why. Um, but, you know, he basically, uh, he would talk to, like, the director and all that, but, you know, he talked to Lucas, but I believe, like, because of the behind scheduling with the conflicts that the director and him would have about the direction of where the film should go, I think, in a way, is a reason why, uh, like, the budget, you know, you know, it went over budget because of the time, aside from the delays that were had on set, I'm sure there's, there was like, a, there was like a creative uh, discussion and stuff that uh, of where the film should go, and. So that's uh, one thing, and also like uh, Jim Henson's uh, *The Dark Crystal*. Um, Kurtz produced that film as well, and he uh, was not thrilled with how Gary Kurtz was doing things, like how he was handling the budget, and he taking control here and there, and it, it, it got to the point where Jim Henson actually was about to fire uh, Gary Kurtz, but because uh, Lucas and Henson had uh, have a, had a relation, had a friendship, and also. Uh, ILM, I believe, did the effects for Dark Crystal, you know, his company at the time. Uh, he convinced him to keep Gary Kurtz on as producer, and he helped give them money to, you know, uh, basically just to get back on track with the filming, so things would... Uh, in a way, even out with the money that was essentially, I guess, you could say, lost from mismanagement uh, of money, basically. Um, um, and he, um, yeah, he said that, that again, like. Lucas didn't care about the story after the success of Star Wars Empire with merchandise like t shirts, posters, and particularly action figures. The thing though is, Lucas was interested in the story. 
he changed the Ewoks on Endor, which were supposed to be Wookiees. Uh, but uh, there's various reasons why for this. One, it would cost a lot more to make costumes for seven plus, seven foot plus tall actors uh, to be Wookies because you know the material and everything. Plus, also, like if you got like a basketball team, stuff in various basketball teams, you have to make sure when you film all those scenes it is when they're not playing basketball they're not practicing to play basketball and you know have to fit around their schedule because unless you've got unless there's enough substitutes for all these different like uh, players to, to fill in for them as they go for the movie, to film a movie um, yeah, I don't know. It might it, that could have been a problem, but again, also another reason is because well, again, budgetary reasons is for, like the costuming cost more to make seven foot uh, a whole bunch of seven foot tall costumes <laughs> than it would for a bunch of like three to four foot uh, costumes and also in Lucas's mind um, because Chewbacca was familiar with technology his mind was like well, the Wookiees you know overall would be able to use technology as well as Chewbacca and um You know, Ewoks were made to sell toys, as another thing. But you know, I think Wookies, if they did use Wookies in the film, they, you know, they would sell just as much toys, if not more, since we're familiar with them. We all love Chewbacca. Therefore, a whole bunch of uh, Chewbacca-like figures, you know, are there. And were, you know, people back then would have liked that just as much. Also, if the Ewoks were used to sell toys, uh, it's, you know, on the basis of, oh, they're just cute and cuddly, made to sell merchandise. Well, aside from Wicked and a few other Ewoks, a lot of them were actually pretty ugly. Yeah, I mean, go back and look at the film. Or just look at some pictures of Ewoks. There's not a lot of cute Ewoks. A good portion of them are... are uh, aren't cute. Um, so even from a marketing standpoint of trying to entice... You know, if you want to do something to appeal to kids... Uh, the age demographic for Star Wars... With their really huge into Star Wars... Not many of them would want to get the ugly <clears throat> figures uh, of Ewoks. Like, the, oh, cute, cute, cute and cuddly uh, uh, action figure or uh, plush doll. Yeah, get the one that's looks like it has its face sunk in or looks like death. Yeah. That could give a kid nightmares, really. There was one in particular that was just very... Yeah, very, very ugly. And, um... So, from a marketing standpoint, it's not a very good... It's not good to sell stuff that could potentially... Uh, repulse the target... Uh demographic of what you're trying to reach. Um, another thing is like, oh, the Ewoks, since they're real small, they, uh, it's, 
I've seen how he he's how Gary Kurtz is kind of saying like oh, they defeat the Empire. Well, no, they don't. But the rebels do. They defeat the Empire on the Force Moon of Endor because well, the Ewoks actually uh, are a distraction. Things go are going as well as hoped. Well, they are there for a distraction. And also, remember that they were going to eat Luke and Han in Chewbacca because, well, they had a trap that was sprung and there was a huge net that caught them. And who knows what they were going to do to R2-D2. Probably just take him apart. And, uh, yeah. So, for the cute and cuddly side also, of the argument, uh, the Ewoks were going to eat, uh, uh, the main characters. Um, but I guess because the initial change of, from Ewoks to this small, these small furry creatures, like miniature Wookiees, I guess, uh, or little teddy bears would be a good way of saying it, or seeing it as when describing these new, this new species in Star Wars, well, you know, that, uh, <clears throat> I guess it's easy to criticize something like that when you're not over overtly fond of, but hey, whatever. Um, I must remember George Lucas had a story outline from the early days. He wrote all a whole bunch of stuff that George Lucas said this could be like a twelve-part series, and the trilogy he was making was four through six, and um, yeah, he had. A, but because he wasn't sure if he would ever make any more follow-ups to this trilogy, he wanted it to be like the end. That way, if I never make more after this, it's over. So George Lucas had a outline of how the Star Wars story ended, with a little stuff here and there of what would be the prequels, the basics of that, and potential stuff of continuing later on if he wanted to do so, but, you know, Star Wars is science fiction as well as fantasy, so f fantasy or fairy tales, you know, they usually have happy endings, so, you know, there was a happy ending that George Lucas had from the get-go, and some of the stuff, you know, with the producer and him, when he's writing the script with Lawrence Kasdan, you know, he wanted to follow the story, but Gary Kurtz uh, has said, like, how there's a dark ending where, basically, after Vader dies, and thus the balance of the Force, because he has redemption, and killed the Emperor, and thus, with the help of Luke, helped bring balance back to the Force. Basically, what Luke was going to do was take Vader's helmet, put it on his head, and say, Now I am Vader. And basically go to the dark side. Well, <clears throat> that's kind of uh, odd myself. Um, Because I'm like, by that point, because of how Lucas then <clears throat> made certain additions and changes to the story of Star Wars, of how now Luke has to, <clears throat> uh, he has to bring his father back to the light side. And 
thus bringing balance back to a force, that would not happen really if Luke, after helping redeem his father, come back to the light side, he goes back, goes to the dark side, and thus nothing was really accomplished. Because, yeah, he'll leave the Death Star before it gets blown up, but <clears throat> nothing really was accomplished. And with the story arc of Luke, are we really going to believe that? Uh, Luke would just ab abandon the rebels and and just you know say sc screw the rebellion, screw the Jedi, and all that stuff that he's learned in over these three films. It it didn't make sense to Lucas. Um, and um, so, and that was a big thing that kind of broke the camel's back of all the things that I guess he Kurtz could have, I guess, dealt with. Because George Lucas didn't want a dark ending, since he was uncertain if he would ever want to continue Star Wars after Jedi in terms of story, wise. You know, have this at the end. This is the end. It's over after Return of the Jedi. And so, because of that, Gary Kurtz, he left, and, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, again, uh, a lot of the stuff that Gary Kurtz has said is a lot of hearsay. It's a lot from him. You don't really hear anything from the cast and crew. Uh, talk a lot about <clears throat> Gary Kurtz. And granted, even though it would be him and Lucas and others in the creative process, you still don't hear a lot of the, some of the stuff that he has said come out of the words of others. Um, and granted, I guess, but your cast members, you know, might not be as in the loop with the behind-the-scenes stuff as others, but and some stuff like with, I guess, maybe Mark Hamill would have been put in, had been told in the loop of some stuff that might happen with his character and not revealed a whole lot to him, but give him some indications of where Luke would go let's say, to him and Mark Hamill, um, um, but yeah, Gary Kurtz has kind of gone on and said, like, uh, George Lucas just did it eventually just for the action figure money and t-shirts and stuff, and, um, but given the record of him taking control of other films, not just Star Wars. Him, like, again, like Jim Henson wanted to fire him, but uh, Lucas convinced him not to. So, you know, hey, there's that. Um, and also, it seems as since the, there's a Lucas bashing craze that's been happening over the years. It seems as if Gary Kurtz has kind of somewhat gone on the bag bandwagon <clears throat> and said all this stuff, and yet we don't have others to corroborate what he says. It's just his word. We don't really have George Lucas because he doesn't really. Uh, I don't think anybody's really ever addressed any of that to him. And if they did, he. I don't know if he would even answer it. It's like, you know, I think because of he sees how a good portion of Star Wars fans uh, view him, that it's like, no matter what I say, they're not going to care at all what I say. 
like, you know, because there's a good portion that are very vitriol and venomous against him, and, you know, you know, there are, the, there are those that don't like the prequels a lot, at all, or, at, yeah, actually, there's a lot of them that, there's a good portion that hate the prequels, hate the special editions, and, yeah, I mean, I don't think Gary Kurtz is a bad guy, but at the same time, there's a lot of the stuff he has said over the years, and uh, I'm not, you know, I address some of that stuff here, but I'm sure a lot of you have heard the stuff of Gary Kurtz, of what he said, so, you know, it, it really is really a something, really. Um, I uh, <clears throat> hope you will look at, into this yourself, but, but well, again, the thing is that, again, this was a decade ago or so when I researched all this for a paper, and all that stuff has been buried because of all the new Star Wars news, all the new movies, celebrations, so it's very hard to actually find anything cooperating how Gary Kurtz has got taken control of other films and had Star Wars go over budget, like Empire went over budget. And he had a, and George Lucas came in onto the set and helped, and then a matter of time, short amount of time, fix things. So, budgetary things. So, a film could keep on going to try to make it on schedule, but it got delayed, went over budget, and yeah. That's happened on some other films of his of Gary Kurtz that have ha that has happened after and again I apologize for no sources but sometimes when you've looked at something years ago then you hear other stuff later or even as you're researching or looking up stuff like this like I did now try to get to the bottom of it that way I can try to get the grasp the whole scope of everything. It's just, it's like because people dislike George Lucas a whole lot, when somebody who worked very close with him years ago is now saying things that about George Lucas that aren't positive and in a way is helping reinforce the negativity people a good portion of people view George Lucas in today, they don't really take into account of what he's saying is true. They know, I don't really like George Lucas, and this guy who worked with him, the same stuff about George Lucas that kind of indicated this is all where it was going to go for Star Wars, and it was all downhill from there. So that's just confirming what I, you know, what I thought, and and a felt or whatever about the guy and they don't really look into this themselves and granted it would probably take a lot of hours and how many people really want to search spend hours on something like that when they don't have to um, I did it in sixth grade because uh, I had to do a paper Very thorough report, and uh, teacher wasn't necessarily really strict, but it wasn't very lenient either. It was just, yeah, they were very, they wanted the best out of their students, so something like that, that would help us in the long run in terms of, like, writing papers and stuff, so... 
something fun like that would help. And I would say it helped me into learning some interesting stuff within the, my favorite franchise, as well as other films that I've seen or have heard of that Gary Kurtz has produced. I believe I've seen Dark Castle, or Crystal, Dark Crystal once. I don't know why I said Castle. Um, before, and thought it was okay. It was decent. Um, yeah, but, yeah. It's like people have this view of George Lucas, and if something help continues to help uh, fuel that view. They don't want to actually take the time to corroborate if this is actually true or not. And, uh, yeah. That's all I've got to say on the matter of George Lucas and Gary Kurtz, so... Uh, see you some other time. See you. Bye.